So recently I was talking with a friend of mine that uses Revit instead of ARCHICAD and we were just comparing notes on some of the features. One of the questions I asked him was, can you import PDFs? And he said no. And I was thinking to myself, the last time I had used Revit was version 2015 and it didn't have it at that time. And I was thinking, hmm, interesting. So in this video, I just wanted to show how easy it is to import some various file types into ARCHICAD and give you a little bit of a comparison. Hi, welcome back to the Colorblind Architect is ARCHICAD. And today I'm gonna just talk about a few of the cool, very simple ways of importing file types into ARCHICAD. Now, on the thumbnail of this video, I played a little trick and I said, how do you open up a Revit file in, on a Macintosh computer? Obviously, you can't run Revit on a Mac except through running Windows on a Mac, which, of course, with the new M1s, you know, this Apple Silicon, you're not going to be able to do that natively. You'll have to go through, like, a virtual machine. Uh, well, let's go to ARCHICAD. And as you'll see on the screen, um, if I want to open up a Revit file, well, there's a couple ways I can do it. I can, um, actually, well, no, pretty much the, the way to do it is to just place a hot link, go here, select module, and in this case, I'm going to select a file, and then I'm going to go to my desktop. Uh, no, my downloads folder, and I'm going to select this model sent to me by a colleague. Uh, it was a model of a uh, of a um, concept drawing for a uh, dormitory building, and so as you can see, enable Revit project file. I'm going to select that, and then once it comes up. I'm going to choose the 3D of it. Go ahead and select. I'm going to keep the elevation as in project stories because I don't want it adjusting the levels of the building uh, based on what my model is. And I can also choose which layer it's going to go in. I'm going to say place hot link. And now it's going to import this Revit file into ARCHICAD. So we've waited a couple minutes, finally got through, and now we paste it to the original location and zoom to paste elements, sure. Click OK. And now you can see the Revit file has imported and you'll see this little flashing marquee around it. That indicates, is this where you wanna put it? We can click inside and move it around if we want, or we can just leave it there. Click outside to finalize the import. If we hit escape here, we just wasted a couple minutes. So I'm gonna click outside. And as you can see, this colleague, they left a bunch of different unit types in the model, a little bit sloppy. But that's okay. We can go to the 3D view. And we can go ahead and turn on all the layers so that we can see it. Okay, and now we have their Revit file in ARCHICAD. Yay! Isn't that nice? The downside of this, when you select objects, it comes through as objects. That's not actually walls 
or Windows, it will say that it's a wall or a window, but you can't actually edit it. Because as you notice, it's actually a it's actually an object. So there's not much you can do with it either, other than geometry sizing. Um, so really, when you import Revit into ARCHICAD, it's really just to be a reference. The proper way of doing this would be to import it as an IFC. Then you can actually edit it once it's through, and it will preserve a lot of the object types, the categories, from Revit. But that's a whole other tutorial. Okay, so we did that. What if we need something from a catalog, a manufacturer, and let's say they only have that particular part in Revit. Well, um, let's go to BIMobject.com. If you're familiar with um, using any kind of BIM application, you've probably been to BIMobject.com. It's a pretty popular site. And let's say we want this Salisbury wall mounted, you know, you know, recessed wall uh, mailbox. Well, we can actually download this into our model, but as you look at the file types available, you'll notice that it's only in PDF and Revit. So we can choose the Revit file. I'm going to go ahead and download that. It comes in as an RFA file, Revit family. So let's say we want to add that to our model. Well, the simple answer is you can grab it from the downloads folder, drag and drop it, see if it works. Nope, it doesn't, not for Revit files. So for a RFA file, you're going to go to File, Libraries Objects, and we're going to import RFA as GADL object. We're going to go ahead and select that RFA file. Click open. We're going to go ahead and say this is an object, not a door or a window or MEP equipment. And you can also choose how much geometry you want, how many polygons. Usually just go for the middle. And now it's added. So we can choose our object, go to our library, embedded library, and we'll find it right here in our embedded library. And as you can see, there are not a whole lot of parameters in here because unfortunately, when it does import from Revit, uh, it will bring in a lot of the information, but if there are any, if there's any multiple types within a family, it will only just take what the default type for a family is. So that is one downside of the RFA import process. And we can go ahead and click OK, select it. And as you can see now, we've got the mailboxes imported. And I can go to the 3D and we can come on over. And you can see the geometry is actually fairly accurate to what you would expect. So there you go. What about SketchUp files? What do you do for SketchUp files? Well, that's a little bit easier. We can just grab a SketchUp file from our downloads folder, drag and drop into the floor plan view, and then you can see it's got a little box we can click. Now, I don't even remember which SketchUp file this is. It was something from the SketchUp warehouse. Um, sometimes that can be a nice little way to get a little uh, get some stuff that might not be available on other object websites. It looks like this is for, oh yes, I was doing a store and it had a little soda drinking cooler, uh, you know, like a little display for all the sodas to be up on there. So let's go back to our 3D view and zoom back just a, just a hair. And that's the SketchUp import. Very easy, nothing biggie. Okay, what about PDFs? Um, 
what if we have a sheet, a blank sheet, and I'm just going to go to a random blank sheet. Let's say we need to import the survey from the surveyor. Okay, well, how do we do that? Well, in this case, I've got a survey already lined up um, that I can drag and drop into here. So on the layout tab, if it's a view that's, if it's a sheet that's already ready for printing, I can actually just drag and drop. Turn off the drawing title in this case. Okay, there you go. That's pretty easy. Okay, well, let's say you're working on details and you want to be able to have a specific Conier curtain wall system. Well, let's say it's in PDF format. Okay, let's say it's this view right here and we want to use that. Okay, so let's go to a worksheet. We'll go ahead and create a new worksheet. And we're going to just call this curtain wall details. Now, the reason why I like to use worksheets is it kind of keeps the model clean. I don't like a bunch of crap in the model. I, I, if, especially if it's 2D content, I'll bring it into a worksheet because the worksheets are basically like an independent CAD drafting model view um, that's separate from the model. It's, it's not 3D, it's only 2D content, so, but it allows you to kind of play around and not mess up your model view, which is very helpful. In this case, I'm going to go back and I've already downloaded some of these PDFs. And so, if I remember correctly, where did I put that? It was date added. Yes. And so let's grab that one. That's our Conier system that we were looking at. And we'll go ahead and select the sheet from that PDF that has the detail that we want. We can drag it over here. And you can see the PDF came in full fidelity. Now let's say I want to actually edit one of these details. Well, here's where Autodesk users get ready to have a heart attack and wish that you were dead. Select the PDF. Right click the PDF. Explode into current view. In this case, I'm going to turn off keep original elements because I just want to edit the content. And I can use a bunch of other settings, maybe drawings layer, project attributes, all that stuff. Great. Click OK. All right. Now we can zoom in. And as you can see, I have editable CAD elements from the PDF. Sorry, Autodesk users. You can't do this. <laughs> All right, so what next? What about DWGs? It's got to be harder to bring in a w DWG, right? Okay. Well, let's see what that involves. Here's another Conier D DWG that I downloaded. We're just going to click, drag, drop. Okay, so we just dropped it into ArchiCAD. I'm going to set our unit type. Usually ARCHICAD is pretty dang good at figuring out what the import should be. So usually I just click place. And guess what? We just imported the CAD, the DWG file, straight into ARCHICAD with a drag and a drop. Again, sorry Revit users. It's not that easy for you. In this case, to edit it, we also select it, right click and explode into current view. And that is how we actually get down into the nitty gritty to be able to edit the different line work and even the text. And by the way, when it imports the text, it imports it as true type fonts or open type fonts, not as AutoCAD fonts, which is really nice because 
You don't have to deal with those stupid SHX files, which are horrible. If you've ever used AutoCAD, it sucks in that, in so many regards. ArchiCAD uses all just built-in true type and open type fonts from the operating system. No extra fonts involved in the install. Uh, very helpful. So yeah, there you go. That's how you do importing into ArchiCAD. Makes it a little bit too easy. Anyways, with that, I bid you adieu for another day. I'm David, and peace out.